Government to spend 3 billion shillings to get children off streets. Screamed a headline on March 19, 2019. The announcement made by the then State Minister for Youth and Children Affairs, Florence Nachiwala Chiyinji. Nachiwala revealed that this money would be funneled towards multi-sectoral swoop operations involving her gender ministry, KCCA, police and several local governments to rid Kampala and other major town centers of children begging for arms on the streets. Eight months later, on October 23, 2019, Nachiwala told a media briefing in Kampala that cabinet had approved 5.8 billion shillings to implement a strategic plan of removing street children, rehabilitation and resettlement to their respective areas of origin. Of the 3.4 billion shillings requested in March, Nachuala, who was dropped as minister in July 2021, and made senior presidential advisor on gender and youth affairs revealed that only 1 billion shillings had been released by the Ministry of Finance, which limited implementation of the work plan to only Kampala. To date, we have uh, evacuated 623 children from the streets of Kampala and, and the urban and peri urban uh, areas in Uganda. Though the, the program has not spread to the rest of the, the, the country because we requested for 3.4 billion Uganda shillings. And as at 30th June, they had released 1 billion from the government coffers to the Ministry of Gender. The Gender Ministry, as the main coordinating agency, according to an implementation action plan seen by NTV, then embarked on signing MOUs, which were cleared by the Solicitor General to ensure compliance with several agencies and NGOs. The MOUs were signed with KCCA for street surveillance, withdrawal advocacy and demolition of temporary shelters in Chisenyi and Katwe, police for surveillance in Kampala and along routes to Kampala, and evacuation of children at risk, arrest and persecution of perpetrators. The Park Local Government for Community Sensitization Uganda Women's Efforts to Save Orphans Ueso for Rehabilitation, Tracing and Resettlement of Unaccompanied Children. And with the Federation of Uganda Football Associations, FUFA, for Rehabilitation of Children Interested in Football and other NGOs that operate rehabilitation centers. Then came the sharing of the money. An implementation plan by the Gender Ministry, a copy seen by NTV, shows that of the 1 billion shillings, KCCA was allocated 258 million shillings, which was spent as follows. 65.2 million shillings on 24 hours street surveillance, 46 million shillings on picking children off the streets, 30 million shillings on closure of temporary shelters, 62.7 million shillings on repatriations to Karamoja, 35 million shillings on media campaigns and 18.6 million shillings on rescue meetings. Police received 76.6 million shillings, out of which 30.9 million shillings was spent on surveillance along target points in Kampala and 45.7 million shillings on evacuation of at-risk children. Napak District Local Government received 38.9 million shillings out of which 17 million shillings were spent on community sensitization, 10.5 million shillings on surveillance of routes, 8 million shillings on advocacy, and 3 million shillings on coordination. FUFA received 201 million shillings to buy food and train the children with football skills, while Ueso, which was founded in 1986 to empower girls, boys, and youths to survive, received 31 million shillings, out of which 28.2 million shillings was spent on food 
and non-food items. The swoop operation netted 724 people, 585 children and 139 adults from Old Kampala, Katwe Chikaramoja Zone, Katwe, Kampala Central, Chisugu Go Down and Wandegia. Of the group, 220 were Karamojong children and 504 non-Karamojong children and adults. The children were screened at Camp Ingisan, subsequently taken to Uweso Rehabilitation Home in Masulita, among other places. Some children were reunited with their parents and others escaped. This is a, a multi-sector approach. The ministry, it is not within the mandate of the Minister of Gender to effect arrest. Uh, the Minister of Gender can alert the relevant security apparatus to swing into, into action, in which case this would be the police. Since January, um, we had a very, very big number. We had an influx of numbers. In one night, uh, KCCA did an operation. Okay, maybe I need to explain this. Um, Uganda women's effort to save orphans, this is, uh, as I said, it's an end joke focusing on orphans. But of current years, we have been overwhelmed by the street kids. Street kids are increasing, we're increasing and increasing, so we ended up finding ourselves helping the street kids, not specifically orphans from different communities, because of the need. Now, what happens, USO has been working with government so closely, we work with KCCA, we work with the Minister of Gender. So, <clears throat> the whole aspect of uh, the issue of uh, generally children living and working on the streets needs to have um, uh, multiple approaches. It cannot be a one-phase way of approaching everything. When you look at the issue of children on the streets, Usually we ask that we look at the push factors, we look at the pull factors. What is pushing the children to come to the streets and then also what is attracting them to come to the streets. What is pushing them to come to the streets could be circumstances like instability. For example, when you see that there's cattle raiding and uh, a, a form of security instability in the area of Karamoja, you will see there's an influx of more children trying to escape. A review of several policy documents show that the Gender Ministry and KCCA periodically budget and spend millions of shillings to combat the soaring crisis of street children, particularly from Napak district in the Karamoja sub-region. But given the absence of sustained street children interventions to avoid reoccurrence and the need to formulate and enforce ordinances that slap penalties for parents allowing their children to live on the streets to beg and the children themselves all plans are imprudent and monies wasted according to investigations by ntv police and kcca routinely invade the karamajong majority inhabited slums around Kampala, such as Chikaramoja and Katwe, to pluck from the muck and mire for forced rehabilitation and repatriation back to Karamoja, particularly to Napak district. It remains unclear about who authorizes these operations, but they have heightened an ease among the settlement, punctuated by squalor, zigzagging drainage channels, and generally poor living conditions. Some of the beggars on Kampala streets live here. But even non-beggars who eke a living by engaging in genuine, albeit lowly, economic activities such as collecting water bottles or winnowing grain in downtown or winnow market are routinely targeted. Police referred NTV to the Gender Ministry for a comment on the matter, while KCCA was not readily available for comment. However, senior gender ministry officials speaking anonymously justified the operations to rescue the children from their parents, who send them out on the streets to beg. Jolly Kaguhangire, the executive director of Uganda Women's Effort to Save Orphans, an NGO whose patron is First Lady Janet Museveni, which runs a rehabilitation home in Masulita, said their facility is also overwhelmed. But this time, because they went beyond 
only the streets. They removed all in different, I don't know where they, keep, they were kept, but where they were picked, but with their mothers. So they brought all of them to our home. She said capacity and resource constraints compounded by poor coordination between government agencies and NGOs undermine all efforts. Uh, KCC wanted to do another exercise, another operation, yeah. which, which we are, uh, as U.S., we are trying to say hold on a bit because we went through a lot. It was too much for us at once. The home isn't ready for these big numbers, 1,000 children. At that time, no one planned. No one even gave us... Uh, like, you know, you, you, you do an operation, but you don't have the money. The NGO industrial complex has developed around the issue of Karamajong Street children, owing to several factors, including the absence of clear-cut strategies to address the issue, government being overwhelmed amid competing priorities. We had 569 homes that were illegal in the country, and this was a lucrative business. Some of these homes are the homes that we are pushing children to the street to make money during that day and take back at night. There are also widespread reports of some NGOs and local leaders in Katwe cutting off school children to private rehabilitation homes, which they use as a basis for fundraising, which the Gender Ministry acknowledged. There are many NGOs uh, who claim to be looking after these children, but there are also some genuine NGOs who are supporting these children people who are buffeting, they open briefcase organizations, they are there, and they run briefcase organizations, and they even go and take photos and they'll publicize them, and we have dealt with that as, as the network. However, of specific concern is the dehumanizing manner in which the sweeps are carried out by the authorities, which suggests that the entrenched stereotypes of barbarism and uncouthness associated with the Karamajong are institutionalized. This leaves a bad taste in the mouth of the survivors such as Christine Nakut, a resident of Chikaramoja Katwe, who are left with mental and physical scars. When the police came, they found us asleep. I was in the house with my children and siblings. I told the officer, who asked for the whereabouts of my husband, that he was preaching as he is a pastor. He told us to leave the house. I refused. Then, a female officer took my child and I followed her outside. Recounting the night of the raid in January this year from her rented single room mud and water abode, perched rather precariously on the edge of the drainage channel that hems the Chikaramoja slum in Katwe, Nakut revealed that she was among 80 women with children from Katwe driven that night to the Oweso children's village in Masulita. When we got to Masulita, they lied to us and told us we were going to Luzira with our children. But when we were driven to Luzira, we left our children behind. Six months later, she has not seen her children again. I stayed in Matini for the whole month of March, waiting for the aid and support we were promised. There was nothing to eat amidst general scarcity, so I borrowed some money and returned to Kampala. The war and torment the night raids have exacted on Nakut is a common experience in this community. NTV talked to several women with similar experiences. In many other instances, many children have been missing for months to years, while parents fear to report cases to the police where they claim they are treated with suspicion. For the total combating of urchins at every turn and busy intersection in Kampala, Jinja, Iganga, Mbale, Busia and Lira, the ministry charted a 5.8 billion shillings plan, 226.6 million shillings for spending on sweep operations, 2.5 billion shillings for rehabilitation, feeding and skills training, 
432 million shillings for tracing and resettlement, 275 million shillings for coordination of activities, and 2.3 billion shillings for spending on preventive measures. Year in, year out, the Gender Ministry and KCCA spend millions of shillings on dealing with street children, but it is another case of quantum insanity, doing the same thing over and over again while expecting different results. This is how the ministry's spokesperson responded. I can tell you that those operations will continue for one reason. First of all, the parents themselves are liable for their actions. They are not supposed to bring their children, their children on the street in the first place. The laws in place make it illegal for any adult to use children for purposes of soliciting money from people on the streets. Therefore, the parents complaining are actually candidates for arrest themselves for involving in an illegal act which is contrary to the laws of Uganda. I think uh, before we even, uh, before even they complain, I think I find that uh, the law enforcers should expand their net to even include the, the adults. To the contrary, the Auditor General John Mwanga detailed in his December 2022 report that the Gender Ministry does not regularly carry out activities to control and manage street children by identifying gaps and suggesting recommendations towards eliminating them and improving their welfare. For instance, during that year, whereas the ministry put estimates of street children to around 1,000, only 292 could be accounted for, leaving 708 children untraceable. Damon Wamara, the executive director of the Uganda Child Rights NGO Network, a coalition of 200 child-focused organizations, told NTV it is a complicated state of affairs. Karamoja is one of the most um, deprived but also poor performing in terms of elevating poverty and getting poverty out. Um, and you'll see that those are still push factors because then the children who are seen in the African setting as a form of raising income sent to the cities, to the urban areas, not only Kampala, many of the urban areas to be forced into what we call uh, forced begging for the purpose of the family receiving an income. Wamara said NGOs are playing a key supportive role. The civil society organization comes to only cover up the gaps that are, are, are missing. For example, there are not enough homes that can accommodate children of such nature. A July 2022 report by the Parliamentary Committee on Gender inquiring into the plight of Karamajong children who form the majority of street beggars revealed that the problem started in the 1970s and continued to increase in the 1980s. As a result of the insurgency in the Luero Triangle and civil strife in the north and parts of eastern and western Uganda, the crisis spiraled from 2007-2008 with the influx of Karamajong in the streets of Kampala and other towns, especially in eastern Uganda. But it is seemingly getting out of hand as it remains booming business for some.